This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner of the 100 bucks that I give away every Monday is Kim Dust. She's in the entertainment industry and is currently working a full-time day job and doing her side hustle on the side. Kim, congrats. For you, is a chance to win 100 bucks every Monday. Simply subscribe to the podcast on iTunes now and then text the word Nathan to 33444 to officially enter. Again, text the word Nathan to 33444 after you've subscribed. So, folks, something very nerve-wracking happened while I was on my way home for Christmas. I was on American Airlines Flight 1272, Flight 12D. I get off the plane, and I realize I left my MacBook Air 11-inch in that back seat pocket. I panicked because I have so much sensitive data on this computer because of all these companies I'm acquiring. I mean, hundreds of due diligence stocks, so I needed that stuff secure. I'm using a tool called Jamf Now, which allows me to manage all my Apple devices. I'll tell you what happened, and you'll learn if I got my MacBook Air back midway through this episode. In the meantime, try Jamf now at NathanLacka.com forward slash secure. That's NathanLacka.com forward slash secure. Nathan Latka here. This is episode 532. Coming up tomorrow morning, you'll learn from Kate and Tim. They've raised 1.5 million bucks and just passed 100 grand in monthly recurring revenue by helping 800 customers manage and track documents. The Top Tribe, good morning, Nathan Lacka here. Our guest today is Steve Richard, and his mission and life's work is to help as many sales professionals as possible become wildly successful. He's been featured in numerous publications, including the Harvard Business Review, the Washington Business Journal, and the Washington Post. Outside of work, Steve enjoys scuba diving, skiing, running, and watching lots of football. He lives in Arlington, Virginia, with his wife, Ellen, and their four kids, all under the age of seven. Steve, are you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. Your company CEO and four kids. What are you drinking in the morning? <laughs> Believe it or not, not coffee. Generally, <laughs> I'm out of the house morning at 530. Try to get back just in time for the kids to start wake up and get them ready. That's great. All right. Tell everyone real quick. So you're your founder and CEO of execvision.io. Tell us what it does and how you make money. Yep, exactly. So the whole idea is uh, business and sales organizations have all these conversations. These conversations are assets to a company. And what we're missing is the way sports coaches uses, use game film on the field, going back to football in the, uh, in the bio where you started out. And as a business owner myself, I was always frustrated. We've got a lot of people on the phones, a lot of people doing demos, screen sharing meetings. I was frustrated that we didn't have the ability to do anything with those. There was this call recording paradox. So it's uh, exec vision is a software as a service product. And it's being used by about 50 organizations at this point to improve there, the conversation. Those are 50 paid organizations, uh, Steve? 50 paid, correct. Yep. That's right. Okay, and then walk us through exactly what they're paying for. Tell us about the product. Sure, sure. It, it allows you to access, analyze, and share call recordings and understand what's going on inside. Because there's, like I mentioned before, this call recording paradox. I always, we, our business had call recording, Nathan, and nobody did a darn thing with them. We had this big pile of unusable call recordings, even doing something simple like listening to it and and then saying, oh, you really need to hear a minute 309, something interesting happens here, was virtually impossible. So we solved all those problems, and, and we're also solving problems around reporting on things like, are your salespeople talking too much? Versus are they listening enough? Are they asking questions? Um, how can you build a library of the best calls for onboarding new people in your organization? And okay, so I have some questions about the product. Before I do that, though, help us understand just kind of customer size. So on average, what's kind of the average customer paying you per month? Sure. On average, uh, seventeen twenty thousand dollars per year, okay. um, and and it ranges in size. We have one customer that has five people that are on this, five salespeople and customer success, all the way up to someone like a HubSpot. Okay, but if you do do a weighted average, it's about a seventeen to twenty thousand dollars annual contract value, typically. That's correct. Okay, so is it fair to say I can just take fifty customers? Uh, uh, obviously, do the multiplication. You're doing a monthly ARPU, uh, somewhere around fifteen hundred bucks at that ACV value, and then uh, can I do fifty times fifteen hundred to get somewhere around uh, what is that seventy grand in MRR? You, you 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 can estimate pretty closely. That's right. 
Okay, good. Okay, so let's go back to the product. So look, there's a lot of things, you know, Uber conference records your calls, says, hey, you were talking too much, saying gives you percentages, thing. you hear all these different tools that kind of touch on different things that you do. But the question I always end up talking to CEOs about that are in the space is just like adoption, right? I mean, even the name exec vision, if I'm an employee, I'm going, I don't want my executives to be spying on me. Like I, I, this pressure, how do you convince people to actually adopt this thing and use it on a daily basis? Well, the funny thing is they love it. So um, one of the things that lessons that we learned now, now, Nathan, I actually did not build this technology from the ground up. We acquired it. We were the customer, a customer of something called team visibility. Okay. And, uh, and, and we found that people hated that and used the camera that sat on the, on the top of a person's computer. And it was almost like the eye of mortal or watching them. Um, they revolted, they aimed it into the ceiling tiles. Um, but what we learned from it, was, was really relevant. People want to have the opt-in program and people are looking for feedback, especially millennials in sales jobs, customer service jobs, support jobs. They want uh, mentoring and feedback from senior folks. So we, uh, what we do is for our customers, we, we put a, a coaching request button into whatever their system of record is. Salesforce, whatever dialer they're using, something like a sales loft, insightsales.com, something like that. And then they can go and say, hey, I want to have feedback so after they, they're done with the call, after they log their call, they say, coach me. So now all of a sudden what we went, what we did is we went back and put that into our, our sales force and watched what our people did in our services business. We've got 35 people on the phone in a separate services business that funds this technology. And what we observed was fascinating. Every month, the percentage of calls where the reps asked for coaching and feedback went up. It was almost magical. And I've got the data to prove it. And, and we see the same exact thing happen in other organizations. So it's a question of how do you make it be the right flow so that, A, it's easy for managers to do something with. They can action it. They can so listen to it. What, it so what, are you doing, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with the audio and or visual content so that the manager doesn't have to go back through and actually listen to the hour-long phone call? Is there something you're doing to translate kind of voice recognition into text or something to then drive action? That's exactly right. All of the calls are transcribed. All of the calls are keyword searchable. All of the calls are indexed based on uh, data from CRM like Salesforce um, and other CRMs as well. So that rather than going in and saying, hmm, what, sh what should I listen to? And there's this big pile. Instead, you can go, all right, I only want to hear late stage opportunities where the salesperson used the word value. I want to I hear wh what that part of the conversation sounded like and how the customer reacted, the prospect reacted to that value conversation. So that takes an exercise that would have taken before probably an hour and takes it down to 30 seconds. Do you have to then train a salespeople to use like the keywords to actually make the thing searchable? Like what if I use the thing? Okay. Hey, I'm glad you like our features. Uh, let me talk more about uh, what you get exactly with this pricing plan. Or I could have said what you get for this value. Like how, how do you, in other words, how do you train the salespeople and relate that back to the search terms to actually make this stuff valuable? You, you find out what the best people are doing differently and you clone them. You finally have a way to clone. You know, we've been looking for a way to clone our top performers forever, but we really didn't know what they did in their sales calls. Now we know. So when we identify something they do, um, the customer in the customer's instance of exec vision, they can tailor the keywords on the keyword display. You can search for anything else, Nathan, but just like any other human thing, if it's right in front of their face, they think about it. So if they're looking at 15 different keywords, that we know are critical or topics that we, are, we know are critical for a salesperson to hit on. It's kind of like jazz. It's like hitting the notes in jazz. Then in all the rest of the conversations, once we teach the salesperson, hey, you got to hit these notes. Then after that, you go back and you say, are they hitting the notes? And it's either yes or no. Sometimes you pull up calls and you see all those 15 words that are critical. They get a zero next to every single one of them. Well, what, 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 what are we talking about here? Because we're not talking about the right stuff. Got it. Makes good sense. Okay, let's go through some of the economics now that we understand more about kind of what the business does. What is the, so you said you bought this thing. What were you doing beforehand? Or are you still running that other company that you were doing before you acquired this one? We are, yeah. So there's a company called Foresight, B-O-R-S-I-G-H-T. It's an outsourced appointment setting business. Um, really interesting market in that there's more demand than there is supply. So at any given time, all of the different appointment setting vendors out there are raising their prices and they have no trouble because there's more people who need meetings than people who are willing to get meetings. You can think of it as like sales development reps on demand. So we've grown that to 35 um, SDRs for hire, um, being contracted by companies like Tibco, Marketo, Corporate Visions, those kind of people. At the end and of a trial can period, can they go in-house or no? Uh, so when, in that business, most people pay us a fee per meeting. Some people pay us a fee per time. 
And for the most part, it's a supplemental to something they're doing in-house. So they do a little bit themselves of uh, outsource to us as needed. That's what we see. Got and we use, the pro- we use the profitability from that organization to fund exec vision. We also pluck the best talent from that organization to put into the exec vision sales and customer success organization. So, so is this, did you launch this boot, totally bootstrapped or have you raised capital for exec vision? We have raised capital since then. Um, but when we originally founded uh, Voresight back 11 and a half years ago, it was completely bootstrapped, uh, did no debt, no investors for 10 years. Great. At the 10 year mark, the 10 year anniversary, my business partner and our CEO, David Stillman looked at me. I'm, I'm actually the chief revenue officer, not the CEO, but he looked at me and he said, Hey man, what are we doing? You know, like we've been doing this for 10 years. We essentially built a lifestyle business when we were like 35 and said, you know, are we just going to ride this thing? Or do you want to go, you want to go and do something meaningful that's going to change the world? And we said, hell yeah. So that's when we went and bought team visibility. Um, and then since then have, have built it up to the numbers that you talked about before. And, you know, more, more than anything else, Nathan, the thing that drives us is salespeople getting better. You know, and, and, and there are, there's a lot of companies out there that are tackling this problem of conversations or a black box. Like who, who else? A lot of What's that? Who else? Who? Names them. Uh, if you go into the big call centers, they've been ta- tackling this problem forever. Interactive intelligence, nice systems, fair. There's just a ton of, of, of technologies that do kind of sort of similar things that we do, but they're really built for like American Airlines call center. Got it. Um, if you look at if, if you look at a, a typical B two B sales or B two B C sales organization or a service organization, this is a completely foreign concept to them. They've so, never had anything like this. So back to my original question: How much have you guys raised for this concept so far? So um, between everything involved, around a million. Okay, and what did you, you said you bought it in what year? Uh, year and a half ago. Okay, so that for people listening to this episode later, that would have been early what twenty fifteen or late twenty fourteen. It was April twenty fifteen. 2015. Okay. So, so mid 2015, um, you raised it. Uh, what'd you buy it for? Well, it was, it was, uh, all, uh, uh, equity. Okay. Got it. So, so is the current team still with you guys or did you replace them? They now have equity in the company. No, there are no, none of the original people that were involved are still involved at this point, now. but they have equity. Yes. Yeah, so many. Got of them it. Do. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And okay. I, I don't want to go into any, any, any significant detail there, but you can get a sense for how we try, how we uh, structure that. Yeah, no, that's fine. Talk to me about, about churn. What's your gross customer churn monthly? It's over, we're, we're, retention is over 90%. Annually? Annually. Okay, so it's so looking, sub 1%. It's looking, really, it's looking really good. And you can, you can also run the, the calendar math. So we're seeing all of our, uh, of the first deals that I sold after we acquired uh, team visibility, all we're doing right now. And they're renewing uh, well north of 90%. So when you obviously don't know this cause you're, you're fairly new, but when you're projecting and estimating how much you're willing to spend to acquire a customer, obviously you want to relate that back to lifetime value. Do you, obviously it sounds like it's more than a year, so it's more than 20 K, but do you know, do you have a back end, you know, napkin estimate what the lifetime value of a customer is? Uh, we, we don't yet because it's too soon, but you can guesstimate that it's going to be depending on time value of money, multiply it times probably somewhere in the range of, Seven to ten, one would think, based on, the, ten years. On, the, on the high renewal numbers that you would have. Yeah, it could be, yeah. could be that high. We don't know. I mean, the reality is, Nathan, we don't, we're not sure at this point. Yep. Um, what, what we do know is, is we've got a nice ratio of, um, of, uh, uh, AT, uh, of ACV to, uh, to, to customer acquisition costs. So what is that? that what's your, what's your CAC? But, but what's, your CAC? The, what's your CAC currently, uh, Steve? Just throw it out for us. acquisition costs, something in ballpark 70%, I think it is, or 65%. Of ACV? Of ACV, yeah. Okay, so, so call it I like mean, seven grand. LT, LTV over ACV long-term, but we just don't know what the LTV is going to look like. Yeah, yeah too. Steve, let me just drill down on that so the audience can quickly round up these numbers. So you said uh, CAC is currently about 60% of LTV, L, or sorry, of ACV. ACV is about 20 grand. That's annual contract value. So so 10% of that, or sorry, 60% of that, take it back out, is somewhere around, what, 10 or 11 grand per customer? Ballpark. And where are you spending that? Is that Are those inside sales reps traveling, paid marketing? Where's that money going? Inside sales. All inside sales. Mm-hmm. How many team members do you have right now? We have five. Oh, wow. Okay. How many of them are doing inside sales exclusively? All of them. Are they either doing sales development or, or inside sales? Okay, wait. So is this a tech product? Do you have a tech team? Oh, yeah. We, of course, we have a technology team. Sure. So what part of the tech team is of the, of the five people? Oh. Steve, Steve you cut out. Uh, oh, total, we, we can't total, hear you. Say that again. Total head count in the company is around 15. 15. Yeah. And of, and of those 15 people, five people are in sales. Uh, there's another person in customer success. 
Nice. Okay, good. And where are you guys based? Where's the team based? Arlington, Virginia. Very good. Good texting up there? Getting there. We were we were the uh, most improved player uh, last year, according to uh, <laughs> Cameron. Uh, uh, it's, it's, a far, it's a far cry from San Francisco and New York and Boston and Austin, but it's uh, we're getting back. Very <laughs> good. Well, Steve, before we get into the final few questions of the episode, last uh, I always like to ask uh, if you remember what your first year revenue was in the business. Do you remember what that was? I guess that would have been oh, 2014, going back, going back, If you go back to the foresight business, I think the first year's revenue was like $120,000. And then where did you guys round out 2015 at? All in, I think between the two, it was 5.2 or something like that. Okay, okay, but you're currently at 70 grand per month in MRR, so a significant portion of that is not coming from Exact Vision. It's coming from the other company, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And the services business funds the technology. Exactly. And just and just the uh, exact vision. What are you looking at? Somewhere around five hundred k in twenty fifteen. Uh, in terms of what? In terms of total revenue. Yes, although I'm looking at it more in terms of like an MRR. MRR. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. right. Really. Okay, very cool. Good. Where is the best place for folks to connect with you online if they want to follow you as you keep building this thing? Absolutely. Well, you know, we do this thing called Call Camp, Nathan. It's free sales training. We do it monthly. Everyone who's listening. You're crazy if you don't uh, get involved with this. Um, so if you Google Call Camp and Steve Richard, you'll find the link. Or if you go to executivision.io, Call Camp is all over it. Um, and just have your team sign up. Listen, every month we've got these incredible sales experts. We analyze real sales calls for what works. So uh, like I said, a free monthly sales training. Take, it, take advantage of it. So guys, I told you at the beginning of the episode, I left my MacBook Air on an American Airlines flight in the back seat pocket on the way home for Christmas, and I was so panicked from a security perspective. And I will tell you, so many CEOs that I talk to and entrepreneurs, they worry about security. So I'm using this tool called Jamf Now. It allows me to secure all of my uh, Apple devices, so iPad, iPhone, all that stuff. And furthermore, I can put my whole team on it at the business. And if I have apps I want them all to install, I can push it to all of them all at once. Or look, we have to fire people sometimes. If, if you ever have to fire an employee, you don't have to worry about them running off with passwords and hardware. You can lock them out very quickly and easily using this, again, tool called Jam Now. It's totally free. You can try it at NathanLacka.com forward slash secure. NathanLacka.com forward slash secure. Totally free to get started. And again, use this if you have to lock employees out. Keep yourself secure. And remember, look, we have Russian hacking everywhere we have yahoo a billion accounts hacked you've got to keep your stuff safe folks try what i'm trying nathanmica.com forward slash secure go there now okay top tribe i have to tell you many people go nathan and you came out of nowhere your website's going so fast how'd you do it the answer is simple so i use hostgator i don't know if you guys know that but i use hostgator and the reason i do they have like about 4500 free templates i can use because i don't code they've got a great e-commerce plugin and guys i bug the heck out of their support they've got 24 7 support which i love so what i've done is i've worked with them you guys know i make great deals if you go to hostgator.com forward slash nathan you can see Sign up, get your own domain for 30% off and a 45-day money-back guarantee. Okay, again, I make great deals for you guys. Go to hostgator.com forward slash Nathan to grab that now. All right, guys, we'll link it on the show notes at nathanlatka.com forward slash the top 532. Again, forward slash the top 532. All right, Steve, let's wrap here with the famous five. These are one-word answers. Number one, what's your favorite business book? <laughs> RSVP selling by uh, Tony Hughes. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, you you got to love Tony Beats on Gold Rush. <laughs> Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have, like Acuity Scheduling? Owler. Number, uh, how do you use Owler? Uh, because their competitive insights are phenomenal and it's free. Interesting. Number four, yes or no, do you get eight hours of sleep every night? Hell no. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say four kids, startup, no way. <laughs> Uh, and how old are you? Uh, 36. That's probably the hardest one for me to answer. I have to think about that one the most. Yeah, I know, right? It's the la last question here. Take us back 16 years. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? You, you got to start with a technology company in the beginning because you're going to create much more impact on people's lives. Top drive. There you have it from Steve Richards. Start with a tech company. will create more value. They acquired Exact Vision about a year and a half ago. Now up to 50 customers. They raised a million bucks for it. Did about 500 grand in 2015 revenue. $1,500 monthly ARPU, which leads to 20 about a 20K ACV. They're spending about 60% of ACV on customer acquisition focused on helping sales teams 
get smarter with their team of 15 based up there in Arlington, Virginia. Steve, thank you for taking us to the top. Thanks, Nathan. If you enjoyed Steve today, go back and listen to Alex Babin yesterday. They raised $5 million on a note. Uh, and that was the cap in it. They're pre-revenue. How'd they do it? Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars. And I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google Ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it. Okay, again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google right when you sign up with my website host provider, HostGator. Go sign up now to get your free money. HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Again, that's HostGator.com forward slash Nathan. Okay, Top Tribe, I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And don't forget, before you listen to any other episodes, subscribe on iTunes right now for your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday.